Wow, what an audience. I just get a few times what hearing you as a person who used to live here in the United States and work here. I'm really happy that at least the pronunciation of Azerbaijan and my last name is start to be more and more correct. Is it? <laughs> So, which is, which, is, which is a very good tendency. Previously, even when we get the cables from State Department, they sent instead of Azerbaijan to Abidjan, which is Ivory Coast and in Africa. So, <laughs> now I feel myself very proud that uh, so big and good audience is getting more and more information about my country. And it's a great privilege to address you. Uh, it's a thank you, David, for all your assistance and uh, all your courtesy and meetings with us, with our people. As I said to David, our ambassador, every second cable which he's sending from Washington is dedicated to the Jewish issues. So our ambassador is very, very, very keen on that. So I, I'm very much appreciated that uh, working together on the uh, different uh, issue, uh, different uh, topical issues, uh, which is uh, go beyond beyond of uh, national borders and affect all of us. And this year, your global forum, it's also a very good opportunity uh, to address the world's pressing issues uh, ranging from developments in the Middle East to the question of identity and the relations between the religion and state. All of these are also topical for my country as well. And before sharing with, uh, with you my views on some of these issues. Uh, I would like to say a couple words about uh, my country's relations with the State of Israel, as well as of our cooperation with the American Jewish Committee and the vibrant Jewish community here in the United States. First of all, on our relations uh, with Israel, I can tell you that it's very close and friendly and uh, go much beyond of formal diplomatic ties. Uh, one said once uh, that our relations with Israel is like an iceberg. You can find out only part of it from the press, and the huge part is beyond all the water. And uh, uh, all of these segments and uh, friendship uh, which runs uh, between our two respective governments and societies, I can so it's as a reinforced by strong bonds uh, between our two people. Uh, it was just previously we heard that uh, we have a very vibrant, very strong Jewish community who used to live with us for centuries. And uh, probably beyond of Israel, this is only Azerbaijan, when we have a, a town which calls uh, a Red Town, uh, where pure Jewish community are living uh, uh, of mountainous Jews in Azerbaijan. Uh, relations with Israel is also uh, based on this uh, five cornerstone pillars, which I will uh, try to define. First and utmost, as I said, uh, having our very vibrant, very strong Jewish uh, community in Azerbaijan, as well as those who moved to Israel, who still have a very good and close contact. So it's a very strong people-to-people -people, uh, links. Uh, the second point is, of course, we are in the same uh, uh, region, we call it uh, ge geographic proximity if it can be defined. Uh, the third one is, of course, trade and commercial uh, ties uh, and uh, cooperation, uh, economic cooperation. The fourth one is, of course, uh, we have more mutual understanding, and that was I clearly learned through my recent visit uh, to Israel, and more mutual understanding of regional security environment and, and on global affairs. And last but not least, of course, is a quest for peace. Uh, both of us and Israel uh, is uh, very strong in this quest. So the first one, uh, strong people-to-people -people links. Uh, it was just recently when I was introduced as a, uh, as a speaker, uh, that you also heard about that my country is very rich on energy resources. And it's true. Uh, Originally, Azerbaijan uh, and particularly Apsheron Peninsula, they get out the map from here, but that's where Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, located. It's considered uh, that uh, 
a birthplace for petroleum industry. And uh, in, uh, by the late 19th century, Azerbaijan provided for approximately half of global oil output. By the way, in uh, 1847, more than a decade before oil was uh, drilled and discovered in Pennsylvania uh, in uh, 1859, but we already got at that time in 1847 the first uh, oil well in, uh, in Azerbaijan. So uh, we are not advocating that we always the first, but uh, that's a small figures for, for you to get better knowledge about my country. And uh, uh, it's, it's true when, when we're talking about the tolerance uh, issue and uh, traditions of tolerance, as again it was said, uh, where we are quite uh, successful and in peace throughout the centuries, uh, we, we manage to keep uh, the whole three major religions, uh, like Islam and uh, Judaism and uh, Christianity, uh, living uh, uh, next uh, door to each other. And uh, as far as I understand, uh, you know that every uh, year the Israel, that's what I learned in Israel, that they make a special report regarding the anti-Semitism acts. And uh, when I ask uh, that if there any consideration about Azerbaijan, they say, don't even think about it because we don't have any such fact for the centuries and uh, for sure now to, as well. And uh, uh, this is this is one of uh, the uh, this is one of the major pillar for for our countries, independence and developments. And uh, uh, in Baku, we still have uh, thirty five thousand strong Asian Jewish community, and mostly it's it's different. It's also Ashkenazis and Sephardis. Uh, but as I said, uh, probably it's, uh, uh, there is no uh, even a notion of anti-Semitism. Uh, by the way, uh, for, for this is another fact uh, for, uh, for you that uh, when we first gained the independence in 1918, uh, uh, the, uh, the first, the first uh, member of the government, uh, particular uh, Minister of Health uh, in, in the uh, newly form of, uh, for, formated government of, uh, of 1980 was Dr. Yevsey Gindas, an Ashkenazi uh, Jew who served, uh, as I said, Minister of Health in the first Azerbaijan Democratic Republic. And, uh, and, and, and there, was a, uh, there was a special uh, Bund uh, political party who also represent, it was a Jewish political party in Azerbaijan, uh, who won part of the seats in the, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the parliament of Azerbaijan. Plus, uh, one of the first things which was uh, uh, done uh, by the government at that time, they established a Jewish popular university in 1919. So uh, that's, that's a few uh, facts and uh, uh, not surprisingly that I'm advocating that Azerbaijan is increasingly recognized as a, a role model for peaceful coexistence. And being uh, a member of both European multilateral institutions, uh, such as the Council of Europe or Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, very close partnering with NATO, and, uh, but at the same time we're also members of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation uh, with 56 Muslim countries around the world. But still Azerbaijan itself uh, positions itself as a largely viewed as a natural bridge that connects various civilizations and cultures. Uh, just recently we, we had in Baku uh, among the first uh, meetings again with the United Nations led Alliance of Civilization, we call it a multicultural dialogue, and a lot of uh, dignitaries from all around the world came uh, to discuss uh, uh, issues of uh, interreligious and intercultural uh, region. So I'm moving to the number two, geographic proximity, which is another uh, factor and uh, which is very strong in our cooperation with, uh, with Israel. Uh, we do not sharing the borders for obvious reasons, but we are sharing the region and uh, our landmark pipeline, which is delivering uh, around 1 million barrels per day of crude oil, 
which start from Baku uh, and run through Georgia to the Turkish Mediterranean port of Jehan, uh, very much benefits Israel. Today, uh, around 40% of Israeli uh, oil consumptions comes from Azerbaijan uh, via that pipeline. And, uh, and, uh, and now we, there is a special, uh, there's a huge discussion with regard uh, to the, uh, uh, not doing, it's not only with the oil, but also with the natural gas. And the uh, Caspian drilling company, which is established by Azerbaijan, is uh, making, uh, already started with a good positive results, uh, drillings in Israel. So uh, we believe that they will be successful and find out uh, the natural gas, and then that will be an excellent opportunity to, to expand our cooperation is not only oil, but also on gas, and uh, thinking how to deliver it to the international markets. Uh, there was a part of also my discussion when I was in Israel, and I think that there is a very, very uh, uh, good chances uh, further on to develop this. Uh, uh, trade and commerce, the third pillar of our bilateral relations. And as I said, uh, of course, one of the biggest is uh, it's, a, uh, it's an oil and gas cooperation. Uh, but uh, also uh, uh, there is, uh, in two words, Azerbaijan is the biggest trade partner in, uh, uh, in the South Caucasus for Israel. And, uh, and it's, it's not uh, surprising because 83% of the whole economy of South Caucasus, which is also Georgia and Armenia and Azerbaijan. So 83% of this economy, it's, uh, it's accounts to Azerbaijan. Uh, of course, with all this uh, stuff uh, on energy, we managed to triple our uh, pro uh, industrial production uh, and uh, within the last uh, six years and uh, tripled our uh, GDP as well. And uh, through the last 10 years, our budget was uh, increased from 1.5 billion to 25 billion. And this year is probably exceeded 30 billion, which is for us uh, as a country with population of 9.3 million, it's a pretty good result. Besides that, of course, one of the major efforts what we're doing back home, it's decreasing uh, the decreasing the poverty, uh, which dramatically dropped from 49% in 2003 to 6% uh, last year. <laughs> Mostly it's because, uh, again, as I said, this energy factor is it's a, a very huge one, and uh, only uh, for today, during the 20 years of our independence, restoration of independence because of the dissolution of the Soviet Union, investments in Azerbaijan exceeded 140 billion U.S. dollars. Uh, bilateral trade turnover uh, between Azerbaijan and Israel uh, reached $4 billion, and this is, in fact, more than United States-Azerbaijan bilateral trade, which is around 2.3. And, uh, and uh, Israeli companies are very, very active, uh, particularly in Azerbaijan, particularly in the sectors like agriculture, water management and water supply, uh, healthcare, telecommunications. And uh, I believe that it's, it's not the full list and it will be expanded uh, dramatically. I'm not saying that we have very, very, we have very, very successful, uh, very, very successful cooperation in the defense industry uh, area. Uh, uh, so the, the fourth one, it's a mutual understanding of regional security environment and the global affairs. And uh, our political engagement is also on rise. Uh, as I said, well, I have uh, just recently visited not only Israel, but also West Bank, uh, Ramallah. Uh, and I believe that uh, that was very, very interesting uh, to uh, for us uh, to see uh, how uh, can Azerbaijan probably not be advocating, uh, but at least give, be, be a, a sample that uh, for anyone who really interested in peace, uh, that it's a possibility that uh, people of different uh, religion can and must live uh, next door to each other without any uh, security problems. Uh,
And that's why, why I moved to the last uh, point uh, of our bilateral uh, cooperation with Israel. It's, uh, it's a quest for peace. Again, uh, as a country who is itself suffering from the unresolved conflict with the neighboring Armenia uh, after the very bloody war, uh, which uh, resulted with the occupation of territories of Azerbaijan, it's around 20%, and all these territories are uh, uh, fully ethnically cleansed. Uh, we also put our efforts and understanding that how difficult it is to reach, uh, the, uh, to reach the peace. But uh, at the same time, I believe that there is no other choice. Uh, you have to do it, uh, you must do it, and uh, uh, because you cannot take your land and run away from the problems. You have to find out uh, the solution. And, uh, and the good neighborhood is probably the best uh, foreign policy which one can imagine. And as a foreign minister, I can tell you that uh, in reality, it's always good to have a good neighbors. Unfortunately, you cannot choose them, but... <laughs> But in reality, I believe that uh, this is the way how we should proceed in this century. Thank you very much. Thank you.